comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. It's no secret that England has a huge variety of accents for a relatively small place. Take Manchester and Liverpool for example. There is just around 30 miles between these two cities, yet their native residents have completely different accents. Just listen to some Beatles and Oasis and you'll start to hear them. Though the disparities between language and conversations across England are sometimes far more than just different sounding accents. Different parts of the country use completely different names for things. For example, ask an English person what they call a bread roll, and you'll get answers ranging from a bun to bap to cob, depending on where they are from. Then there's also the whole woodlouse name debate. This little bug seems to have a different name on every street in England, with titles for them including, but not limited to, Parsons Pigs, Monkey Peas, Billy Bakers, Cheesy Bugs, Billy Buttons, Flumps, Chucky Pigs, Woody Wigs, Wood Pigs, Grandpa Gravy, slaty beetles and dampers. These little insects really could have a video unto themselves one day. Though anyway, perhaps the most well known of specific kind of language and words used by a specific group of people in England has to be cockney rhyming slang. Cockney rhyming slang is a specific kind of communication slash coded speech initially created and spoken of by none other than the cockneys. Though from here you may be asking yourself who exactly even are cockneys? Well at first you may think it is the name for people who live in the very much real places of say cocking or cockermouth or cocks green or cockfosters. If I get monetized for that I'm going to flip. But that isn't the case at all. Cockney is the name for people who live in East London. More traditionally a cockney is someone born within earshot of the bells of St Mary Le Beau Church. However the noise pollution and lack of maternity towards in this part of London these days make being a true cockney a tad more difficult. As well as being a group of people of a specific slang, cockneys have a very unique accent too, which is also simply called cockney. It is sometimes also referred to as the London working class accent and has similarities with the Essex accent, which makes sense as Essex is to the east of East London. The cockney accent's most noticeable feature is probably the dropping of T sounds in the middle of words and the H sound at the start of words. This can lead to a word like hate sound like A. Famous Cockney people include the likes of Michael Caine, Adele, David Beckham, Danny Dyer, Billy Bragg, Injury, and Amy Whitehouse. Though the most infamous portrayal of a Cockney in film, however, has to be Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. Though if you want a fantastically stereotypical depiction of a Cockney person who uses Cockney rhyming slang, foul language, accent, and everything, look no further than Billy Butcher in The Boys, portrayed by native New Zealander Carl Urban. And of course, if you're wondering why these people from East London are called Cockneys in the first place, well, luckily for you, we have a video video explaining that very matter. Anyway, in regards to Cockney rhyming slang, or CRS as I'll be referring to as in the rest of this video, the best way of explaining it is to highlight some famous examples. In CRS, phone is dog and bone, stairs is apple and pears, believe is Adam and Eve, and lies is pork pies. So to use these in a sentence, it would be something like, I'll give you a call on the dog and bone, or I'm walking up the apples and pears, and so on. You would simply use them in place of the actual word with no change to the word order or sentence structure or anything like that. It's relatively simple. I say relatively simple however because CRS can get confusing at times, especially if you aren't British or have any understanding of it at all. Of course rhyming is a key element in the formation of CRS but there's an awful lot more to it too. You probably noticed but pretty much all phrases of CRS are made up of two words. Those two words of CRS however refer to just one word of normal English. These two words come from all kinds of sources, from everyday things like we saw with dog and bone to more specific British slash London things. Take the CRS of Barnet Fair for hair. Barnet Fair is a fair held in Barnet in North London. This is something people outside of London slash England wouldn't have much knowledge of. Likewise Hampstead Heath, a park in London, has become CRS for teeth. It is normally the latter of these two word combinations that rhyme with the actual word it is referring to. Like with the CRS phrase of Barnet Fair meaning hair, it is the latter word of fair that rhymes with hair. 
This is how things can get really confusing. More often than not, people don't actually use the full CRS phrase. Instead, they just use one of the words in the phrase. And it tends to be the word in the phrase that doesn't rhyme with the actual word it is referring to. In example, with the CRS phrase of Barnet Fair, meaning hair, people do not shorten it to just fair. They instead shorten it to just Barnet, saying something like, my Barnet needs a cut. This can make CRS not only more difficult to decipher to the unknowing, but can also make it harder to know you're using CRS at all. Many phrases from CRS have entered use in wider British English in these shortened non-rhyming forms. This means that potentially people are using them without even knowing that they originate in CRS. I have a perfect example of this from my own experience. Butch is a word we use in British English in place of look. For example, you may say, let me have a butch at that instead of let me have a look at that. This term of butch is something I actually use myself fairly often and grew up hearing. I just always presumed it was just an odd British phrase or something. It was only while researching this video I found out that it has its origins in the CRS phrase of butcher's hook, which means look. In this example, not only has the word hook been omitted altogether, but so has the ers at the end of butchers too. All this time, I and many other people have been unwittingly using CRS, and there's nothing wrong with all that I must stress. It just shows how deeply ingrained into British English many phrases of CRS have become. Another great example is with donkeys. In British English, donkeys means years, and you'd use it in a sentence like, I've waited donkeys for this. Like with butch, many people use it casually without thinking twice. But once again, it comes from CRS and the phrase of donkey's ears. I already mentioned porky pies too, meaning lies. But across England, you will hear people being accused of telling porkies, as this phrase of CRS has really hit the mainstream too, it would seem. And while the example sentences I've been using have each contained just one piece of CRS, that doesn't mean you cannot use multiple. You can bring as many pieces of CRS into a sentence together and it makes sense. Take the sentence, I was on the dog and bone but lost signal because I ran down the apple and pears so now I'm cream crackered. This might sound like a bunch of gibberish but it translates into meaning, I was on the phone but lost signal because I ran down the stairs and now I'm knackered, which makes a ton of sense. Though I don't know how widely used knackered is to mean tired slash exhausted outside of the UK. CRS is tough to translate translate to outsiders for a reason though. In fact, it's believed to have been created with the specific intention of outsiders not being able to understand what those talking it are actually saying. CRS started its life as a can't. A can't is a type of language created by a group of people with the intention of being able to exclude others. They are also sometimes known as cryptolex and anti-languages. A great example of a can't is thieves can't. This was a specific set of words and phrases used by thieves in the 16th century in England to avoid getting caught. Terms like bird of a feather, meaning people that are close, or rat to refer to someone who informs on others, comes from thieves can't. I mention thieves can't because it seems that CRS may have started its life as something of the next step up from thieves can't. As mentioned, thieves can't came about in the 16th century, and many sources point to CRS coming about in the 19th century. And it seems that initially CRS was formed by none other than criminals who used these slang words and phrases to conceal their true actions when talking about it in public. Many sources point to the 1840s as being the time in the 19th century when CRS really took off. They pinpoint this decade because it was during this time in which formal policing in the UK came into effect. Prior to this, London policing was done by private groups. The Metropolitan Police were formed in 1829, so by the 1840s they were well established and knew what to listen out for on the streets of London. Hence why thieves and criminals started speaking in a more unique way to avoid the police overhearing their intentions. This also explains to us why many terms for the police like coppers and bobbies are believed to have emerged from this time period too. Some of the earliest phrases 
in CRS were probably names for the police. Though of course, CRS wouldn't stay exclusively in the mouths of criminals for that long. This lingo eventually got picked up by Cockney merchants and vendors. To this day, people who run markets in London are known for using this terminology, often shouting over one another to get the attention of potential customers. We don't seem to know how exactly it shifted from criminals to merchants, but with merchants using these phrases more openly, it allowed them to get picked up on by the general London public. Then from here, the use of CRS expanded all across the country. It would have expanded out of London in a couple of ways. Firstly, London is hugely populated and the hub of pretty much everything in England. So, many people from across the country would have come into London and picked up on this language. Conversely, Londoners would have visited other parts of the country and settled there and taken CRS with them. Though one of the key ways in the 20th century in which CRS really became popular was through television. Many immensely popular British television shows in the 20th century featured Cockney people using CRS such as Steptoe and Son, Porridge, Only Fools and Horses, and perhaps most noticeably the soap opera of EastEnders. The popularity of these shows allowed CRS to be heard by millions of people all across England, firmly embedding it into British English. Even to this day, Cockney rhyming slang is thriving pretty well. As I said, it has really embedded itself into British English in various aspects, being used across the country and unwittingly at times. There's even new phrases and terms of CRS being created to this very day, with varying degrees of success. It seems however that a lot of modern CRS derives solely from celebrity names, like how the name of the popular 90s DJ Fatboy Slim has become CRS for Jim. Though a great modern non-celebrity centric example of CRS is Wind and Kite, which means website. Though while CRS may be spoken more and more, it's probably been spoken less by actual Cockneys. Cockney people, their accent and their slang has always been deeply linked with the working class, and the traditional Cockney homelands in East Central London have become greatly gentrified in just the last 50 or so years. Lots of working class people can't really afford to live in places like Peckham, which for so long were definitively Cockney. Even the only Fools and Horse star of John Chalice said that Peckham is now too posh and expensive for normal people. While Cockney has now expanded to mean people from the east of Greater London, it means the traditional Cockneys are something of a dying breed. Some even estimate that the Cockney accent might be extinct by 2030. So while the fate of the Cockney accent and Cockney people themselves might be a mystery. Hopefully, Cockney rhyming slang will be part of our language for the foreseeable future. This video topic was suggested by Laura Veronica Granice over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a name explain video and wish to enjoy name explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.